Lord God, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, and give you all the praise and all the glory because, Lord, you allowed me this moment and this time. It could have been to anyone else, but you have given it to me. And I am so grateful. So, Lord God, help me to speak with boldness, power, authority, and conviction to the hearts and minds of your people, Lord God. Help me encourage them. Help me encourage my pastor and his wife. Lord God, I need the boldness. I need the power. Because it comes from you. You have all power and you have all authority. So help me to speak, Lord God, as we continue on our Christian journey. And Lord God, as I share, they would know they heard from you if power and if authority go forth, convicting hearts, convicting minds, turning people to your cross. We give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Uh, I'm not going to be with you long. I'm not going to hold you long. That's one thing I don't want to do. I want this. The pastor only gave us one service today. And so I don't want to blow it. (laughs) By having you, I think y'all are in in two. It's it's like when this this preacher, he was preaching and... and, um, at the end of the service, after he preached, he went to the, to the back door. And when he went to the back door, he was there shaking hands and greeting people. And this young boy came up to him and grabbed him by the hand and slipped a little money in it. And the preacher said to, to little John, he says, um, John, you don't have to give me that. Don't, don't give me this. Take, take your money back. He said, so no, 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 no. I want you to have it. He said, well, well thank you. And he said, why would you give me your money? The little boy thought for a minute. He said, well, my dad said you're one of the poorest preachers he ever heard, so <laughs> I just want to help you out. <laughs> so, so, so don't slip no money in my hand. Your money should have went into the pastor's appreciation fund, all right? Let, let us, let us, please let us stand as we read God's word. Pastor, thank you for this time uh, to be able to share. Especially, you are dear to me. And so as we read God's word, John 15, 12 through 17, that's John, the 15th chapter, 12. And you know, we got the kit class, so if you can't find it, all right, take, take some time. John 15, 12 through 17. If you ever say amen. amen. So 12, John 15, 12 through 17 reads this way. My commandment, my, my command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. You may be seated. Love each other. I I, I, want to read 12. Again, my command is this. Love each other. As I have loved you. From, from, this, from this, I wanted to title this message, Pastor, I wanted to title this message, Our Pastor as a Loving Friend. Our Pastor as a Loving Friend. I've, I've, I've known Pastor Shields and 
Y'all, most of y'all know this for, for over 30 plus years. Um, I've known most of the kids before, well, I heard about them before they were born. <laughs> And, and I'm so honored that God has allowed me this opportunity to share, to speak from that point. You see, it, it, it is to have a loving friend. Everybody needs a true friend. Everybody wants a true friend. Everybody want one. You know, no, we hunger, we thirst for a for a friend. We we want one, and we and and we know what it takes to have a real friend. It takes a lot of hard work. But, but so that's why a lot of people settle for artificial friends. Because of the work that it takes. We settle for artificial friends. We, we'll, we're, we'd rather have a Facebook friend or, 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 or a, a, um, a messenger or a chat friend or some kind of, because it doesn't take as much work. I can just text you real quick and be through with it. But having a real friend requires some work. And, and, and so, so progressive, progressive, we have a pastor that put in the work. Yes, yes. yes uh, 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 um, my brothers and sisters, I want this message and what I'm, what I'm going to share with you today, I want it to be one that encourages you. That it encourages you in what God has granted us, what he has given us, what he has allowed us. I want this message to be one that encouraged our pastor. I, I, I want it to be one that we understand what it is to be a f- true friend. That we got it all in us to be friends to one another. And to be the kind of friend that our pastor and our first lady need and, and the type of friend we need to be to one another we're going to find it all right here in this word, and that's what I hope this time gives you. So, so I don't want to waste your time too long. See, see, I hope also that we can truly always find friendships within the body of Christ. There's always a lot of bickering. There's always a lot of fighting. There's always a lot of, my wife says, through the ups and downs of life, but friends, stick with you through all of that. So, 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 so let's, let's, let's see. Let's see what it is to have a true, true friend. A true friend like we have in Pastor and Yvette Shields. This is how you can, this is how you can tell if you, are, if you are a real friend. And this is how you can tell if you have a real friend. 12 says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love have no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. You are my friends if, if, if you do what I command. My first point is a real friend choose to love. That, that's my friend. A, a, real, a, a real friend chooses to love. That's what a real friend sees. You see, you see, I understand it's a choice. I know we, we can get hooked on the word command. This is a command. But he says, if. I, I'm not. That's what he said. When I saw the word if, I understood that it was a choice that he was giving us. God never takes away, the Lord never takes away your choice. He created us with with a free will. So when you love somebody, you choose to do that. And and, and the choice is you're either all in or you're not. Because the love requires you to be all in. It doesn't require you to decide that if you do this, I can no longer love you. It requires that when you are at your worst, I still love you. When you're at your best, I will celebrate with you. When you're at your low, 
I will get in there with you. It's a, it's a choice. You declare. The Lord, the Lord even said that in Romans. If you believe in your heart, if, and then declare with your mouth, I'm giving you a choice to love me. It's going to always be a choice. You know, when you're in the military, Pastor and I, we were both in the military, we were both in the Air Force. And in the Air Force, I don't care if a colonel or a major or a general come into the room right now, he can't tell me a thing. I'm not in it no more. <laughs> but if I was still in there, and if he told me such and such, I would do such and such. If, if you really know the Lord, if you really a child of God, then God is saying you either all in or you're not. And the requirement is choose to love. I'm quite sure Pastor Chills have experience love himself because he has spent time with the Father. He has spent time with Jesus, and I'm quite sure we can all experience and testify about the love that we have experienced from the family, the Shields family. I have my own personal testimonies. I have my own stories. How many of y'all have stories? Just raise your hand about the love that you have experienced from the pastor. Times that you sometimes didn't feel lovable and didn't think anybody loved you, but yet you experienced some love. You did not choose me, the Lord said. I chose you. You did not love me. I loved you first. And that's why you love me. Pastor Shields, we're grateful. Sister Shields, we're grateful for the love that you have shared that multiplies like it multiplies. You know if you're a real friend and you can know a real friend if you honestly choose to just love. Just, just to love. By this will people know that you are my disciples. If you love, you, you can't fake it in the household of faith. You can't, you can't stay around long and, and claim God and just sing songs, but you're acting devilish and evil and vicious to one another. You can't, you can't do that for a while. You can fake it for a little bit, but after a while, like Maya Angelou said, if they show you who they are, believe it. Choose. A real friend, a real friend chooses to love. Verse 15 says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. My, my, my second point is this. My second point is a real friend loves to invest in others. See, a real friend choose to love, but then a real friend choose to invest in others. But I want you to understand this. That requires risk. A, a lot of people avoid that type of friendship because there's a lot of risk in that. And for individuals who are in the financial field and so forth, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I said investments. When you invest, you are taking a risk with your investment. And, and when you invest, you don't invest something, nothing into something. You have to invest something of value to gain value. You, you have to. 
I, I say, I'll say this to you that I know Pastor Shields and Sister Shields have made a lot of investments. They have taken what was of value, be it their time. And you could tell people have gone away to school and, and found that the Shields have invested in your education. Value. They have taken their time, sat with you and encouraged you when your children wasn't doing right, when your marriage wasn't doing well. The investment. They invested their time, their talents, their resources in you. And sometimes your investment is, takes a risk because what you invest in sometimes, they don't give it back to you. Sometimes you get heartaches from the people that you invest in. Sometimes a lot of disappointment from the people that you invest in. Sometimes you get talked about from the very people that you invest in. You thought you were doing something really good and you, you gave your all just to get nothing back. But it doesn't stop you from investing. Because of the first principle, the first step, you choose to love. And only because you have chosen to love can you continually love to invest. It's a requirement. It's, it's, like, it's like this: uh, these, 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 um, um, these two women, they were at the cleaners, and they happened to be pastor's wives. And they were at the cleaners. And one of the ladies, uh, while she was at the cleaners, she was taking her husband's clothes in to be mended. And... and uh, 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 while she was talking, she says, you know what? I am just, my husband and I, we just, we just kind of threw. We just don't know what else to do. Uh, the, the congregation is not supportive. Uh, 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 seem like we always have some problems. and uh, we, It's just not growing. And my husband is at his end. He's even thinking about resigning. And so the other woman says, well, uh, we don't have that problem. Everything is great. I mean, our congregation is thriving. People are loving on one another. Uh, financially, we're doing well. I don't see any problem whatsoever. I'm sorry to hear that's happening to you, but that's not happening to us. And so his wife turns in their pants. Her, her, the first lady turns in the pants, and she's getting the seat of her husband's pants sold. But the other woman, she's getting the knees of her husband's pants sold. See, it takes one man who is willing to be on his knees for the congregation, for his family. That makes a difference. When you choose to invest, you have to realize that the investment may not come back. You're willing to take the loss. You're willing to invest, realizing that it's not guaranteed to come back in your lifetime. It's not guaranteed to come back to you right away. You may never see it. But I like what the Lord says. He says, in, 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 he says this, even if it doesn't come back from them. He said, then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Pastor Shields, I'm so glad that you don't look at individuals to give you your resources, that you still look to God. Because people will let you down. But God will never do that. Thank God for your faithfulness and your willingness to still invest. Thank God that you love to see people glow. See, I, I, I am one, and I share this because this is so powerful to me and my family. It means so much to me. I, I don't think I've heard too many stories like that, but when you do hear it, it pulls at you. And I've shared with you, mostly I know it, the story of when I had multiple myeloma and they said I had one year to live. And that could have been a, that was a hard and devastating thing for my family. It was a hard thing. We, we struggled through the process. But you know what you can do when you have somebody walking through it with you? Do, do you know how powerful that could be? 
how many of you can honestly say that you have been through a hard time in this church and have not seen Pastor Shields walk with you through it? Families have left and have gone on to glory, but Pastor Shields was right there with you. I, I can recall a time that I went to the hospital, and this is what got me. I went to the hospital, and it was late during the evening, and I was visiting the family, and uh, um, uh, they were going through it, you know, and I prayed for the family. I prayed for the person that was sick. Uh, pastor Shields was, uh, my pastor was out all day long working. And, and he's a working pastor. I want you to know he's a working pastor. And so he's out all day long. I never, let me stop for just a minute. I never knew that until I started working with him. <laughs> I, I didn't. Uh, 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 because, see, when I, was, when I was working with him, he said this. He said, Bird, he said, now I know you used to run your own schedule all the time. He said, because I did, I, I, I didn't have like a, a set hours. I was always able to set my own hours. He said, but when you come here, bird, <laughs> you got to have office hours. I was like, oh, okay. All right. But then what made it so is he has office hours. I said, well, he's doing nothing more than what he's, uh, we're doing nothing more than what he expects from himself. But, 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 but going back to what I was saying, I went to the hospital and I, was, and I was spent time with the family. It was late in the evening. I was on my way home and I called Pastor and I said, Pastor, I said, I'll tell you what. Uh, I said, I just got finished visiting the family. You know, they, they're having it hard, but they're doing all right. They're holding on. So I'm on my way home. And what Pastor said to me was, uh, well, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get up and go into the hospital. I said, well, wait a minute, Pastor, I just came from the hospital. <laughs> you know, I just came. You going to get up, <laughs> get dressed, and go to the hospital? I said, I just came from him. He said, said, Bird. He said, I do life with them. I said, I get it. I understand. I said, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> because he invests in people. They invest in people. Sister Shields gave me her bed. She did not complain. I had to go to the hospital the next day, so instead of putting me downstairs where I had to get up and go into another room to the restroom, and I really couldn't really get up, <laughs> she gave me their bed, and they slept downstairs. I'm going to tell you, I, 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 these are folks who's willing to invest, uh, brothers and sisters of the household of faith, members of Progressive Community Church. We have a pastor who chooses to love, and we have a pastor who loves to invest. You know, uh, 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 my wife did something. Now, I'm going to just share this right here. My wife did something that is about, about uh, I, I talked my wife into uh, letting us take some money and invest it. Yeah, I asked my wife. <laughs> All right. Some, some of y'all want be, some of y'all want be hard. I don't ask my wife nothing. I asked my wife. So I, I asked my wife, I said, uh, I want to I wanna invest some money into some cryptocurrency. Why y'all say oh like that? I said, I want to invest some money into some cryptocurrency. And, and she said, how much? And I gave her the number. She was like, what? And it was enough money that we could have took a little, when we go on vacation, you know, had a nice meal and, and, and did some excursions and so forth. But and she, she gave me the money. I invested it. I invested the money when it was over a dollar. It was at one time 10 cents. Some of the people here know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that, that cryptocurrency tanked. I was hoping that it would be like, like the Bitcoin or something. But she asked, how's that money doing? I said, well, we're in the negative. <laughs> the, thing, the thing I'm saying is that when you invest, understand you may not get what you expect from your investment. But because you choose to love, realize that God said, I will supply all your needs. 
according to my riches and glory. Pastor, thank you for loving and for loving to invest. Hello, take sacrifice. My, my, my other point, my other point is this. Besides choosing to love, besides loving to invest, a real friend loves to see others grow. A real friend loves to see others successful. A real friend loves to see others at their best. And that's what we have in pastors and sister shields. Whatever they have, they share. Amen. <laughs> it's, it's not nothing that they have is solid gold and sacred and can't be touched and has to be placed in a vault for everyone just to look at and see what I got. I, I can recall a time when, when I was on my way, Vanessa and I were on our way up to uh, uh, um, Tahoe, and he had this Carmageddon. It was a red comma gear, convertible. And he said, Bird, you want to take my comma gear? I said, yeah. <laughs> and that's not gotten that comma gear. We hit the road, cruise up there, and I was looking good. Did I hear some music playing? <laughs> it was just in my head then. But I'm cruising up the road, I'm looking good. People stopping by, looking at us, waving, I'm waving back. You know, folks coming up to say, you look up, boy, that's a nice looking car. I say, it sure is. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, they love to see other people prosper. Amen. They love to see other folks succeed. I mean, they love to celebrate your success. It's something else when you can have somebody that you can share your joy, your success with, and they're not looking at you with, yo, you think you're all that. Oh, you know you get those. You know they're out there. You know you got those haters as soon as you succeed in some way and you get something and you get somewhere, all of a sudden they're looking to tear you down. You know they're out there. But to have somebody that you can share what God has done for you and they're just as happy as if it was their self. Yeah. That's what we have in our pastor and his wife, his first lady, Yvette Shields. That's what we have. Amen. We have that. I've, I've, I've spent so much time. I remember going by there, going by the house. This was when we were real young. Yvette, do you remember? This is when all you had was, J, was Glenn and, and uh, James. That's all you had. Yeah, you just had those two, and, and y'all were in the apartments. Mm -hmm. And then um, <laughs> Glenn called me up, and he said, Bird, come by the house, man. My wife went out and spent all this money on these steaks. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we got all these steaks. He said, man, I need you to come over. We're going to eat them up. <laughs> and that's what he did. He went over there, and he vet. He vet said, God told me to buy these steaks. <laughs> we cooked those steaks up, and not only did I do that, because they had a swimming pool at the, at the, at the place. So I brought my swim trunks. Right. Brought my swim trunks, went swimming, came over, ate me some steaks, and had a good time. Amen. See, the thing about it is that you can be just as real with our pastor. You can celebrate with our pastor. He's a loving man, a man that invests, and... He wants to see the best out of each and every one of us. Amen. Whatever you have, I, 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 can, I can believe this, that there's somebody here who he have blessed in some kind of way. Maybe it was walking by and put a little something in your hand. Maybe you have something in your house that's re that, that reminds you of him. Maybe you're even sitting on something that he said, Bird, he gave me a jacket. Walked in the room and said, Bird, I, I was at the store. No. We were, at, we were at Nordstrom's. We were at Nordstrom one time, and I was walking in the store, and we were talking, and he was buying some clothes, and he said, I said, man, I'd like to get me a suit. I said, I don't have it right now. He said, bro, try this on. True story. How many of that was together? 
Because I don't want to say, man, that looks nice. He said, let's get it. I said, man, this thing don't fit you. He said, no, for you. Now, I'm going to tell you something. He said, Bert, you look good in that. Yvette said, you sure do. I know I do, Yvette. That's right. Isn't that right, Yvette? You see, the thing that I have discovered that he is not the type of pastor that needs you to always come around him, carry bags. He's not the type of person that needs to say, okay, I need to be in the front. I need to be out front. See, he could have chose anybody right here to preach his 21st anniversary service, but he gave it to me. And I thank you, Pastor. There have been so many people that have been willing to do that. But it fell on me. So I got some stories I could tell you about them that really just... <laughs> they got home. But, so, but, but, but the truth is we have that. A pastor who loves, a pastor who invests, and a pastor who loves to see the best out of you. I'm so grateful for that. That's how you can tell, my brothers and sisters, when you have a real friend. And that's how you can tell if you are a real friend. My last and final point. You did not, 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. A real friend is a friend of God. Let me tell you something. You cannot understand real friendship if, you don't, if God can't call you a friend. You just really don't understand friendship because we don't even understand what love is until God loved us. We don't have that understanding. I, I, I believe that the reason why Pastor Shields is the way he is is we got to save Pastor. We got to save First Lady. They know the Lord. And because they know the Lord and know how much God has loved on them, they're willing to give that love away to whoever's around them. And the way they give that love away is that they like to invest in people. It gives them joy to invest in somebody's life. Do you know Jesus? Are you choosing to love? Who are you investing in? That, that, that is how you can tell a real friend. Can those that you're sitting around say that you're a friend of theirs? Can they say that you are their friend or they are your friends? Are you acquaintances or are you friends of convenience? Do you continually work with your artificial friends? Do you have a true relationship with the one true and living God? Well, I'm thankful that God has given us a model in our pastor and first lady. I'm glad that they uh, uh, show forth the love that was demonstrated long ago, a sacrificial love, yeah. an unconditional love, yeah. a love where somebody has did wrong. He has even, I have even said this to him. He has said, burn, I'm through. Because when pastor gets upset with somebody, he says, I'm through. All they got them, they did the wrong. That's it, bird. I'm through. And I said, yeah, you through until they need something. <laughs> He's not the, as soon as somebody's in need, all that talk is gone. I've seen the brother cry on somebody that had hurt him. I want you progressive. If anyone in here 
have actually experienced the love from our pastor and first lady. Just stand. If anybody in here have received an investment in their life from our pastor and first lady, please stand. If anybody in here experienced the fact that he celebrated with you, his wife celebrated with you, when it had nothing to do with him, he just wanted to see the best in you stand. Pastor and Sister Shields, take a look at what you have done. The lives that you have touched. The people that have been blessed by you. Thank God for a pastor and first lady that are loving friends. I love you both. I can't even begin to tell you how much I do. To each one of your children, to your family members, you have set the bar. The only one, the only one that could have done that with you and Sister Shields would have to be Jesus Christ himself. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hello, my name is Pastor Glenn Shields. I hope and trust that you were blessed by the message. If you're ever visiting in the Stockton area, I'd like to take this time to invite you uh, to our church to come see us in person uh, at 2820 South B Street. Remember this, Jesus loves you. Jesus is committed to you. All you have to do is to continue to seek his face. Again, God bless you and thank you so much uh, for visiting us on the web.